بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Allah Azza wa Jal teaches us in his book that there's one thing if you can get it in this life it's more valuable than everything else Everything else will be okay if you have this one thing. And that one thing is a closeness to Allah. Is being good with Allah. And truly developing a connection and a bond with Him. The problem with people is when life is good and only good, for a lot of people they get distracted. You go from a video game, to a movie, to checking social media status, to hanging out with friends, to a restaurant, to sleep, Allah is out of the picture. There's no Allah left. Is this you chilling? That's all there is. And then times get tough. And the friends aren't there. And the game doesn't feel good anymore. And the car doesn't look good anymore because the health is gone. When the health is gone, none of those things mean anything anymore. All you care about is, I just want to be out of this hospital bed. If I could just walk again, that'd be fine. People are bringing you your favorite food, you don't want to eat it. People are want to show you a movie, you don't want to watch it. All these things that you lived for, everything that you went from A to B to C to D, all these things are gone. I don't care about none of them. Because this one blessing Allah Azza wa diminished for you a little bit. And then at that point, you have two options. If you are of these people that are on the cliff, on the edge, you can start complaining to Allah, why did He do this to me? I was having, He just didn't like that I was so happy? Or you can earn the greatest treasure you and I can ever earn. And that is a, a humility and a closeness to Allah. To actually realize even when I was healthy, even when I was wealthy, even when I was doing well, everything was fine. I didn't realize even then that I was on life support. Allah was actually providing for me every moment. I didn't earn anything on my own. None of it was something that I deserved. This is why Allah Azza wa Jal will say, أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا كَسَبُوا أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا كَسَبُوا Allah Azza wa Jal will describe even fadl, وَابْتَغُوا fadlam min Allah. Not kasabah min Allah. You, 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 don't, you can't earn something. It's a favor from Allah, whatever He's given you. But you don't realize it at the time, because just, it just comes easy. But then you start begging Allah, and asking Allah, and crying to Allah, and praying to Allah like you've never prayed before, feeling closer to Him like you've never felt before. And then Allah heals you. And you realize those moments you had when nobody was in the hospital room, you were just by yourself, crying to Allah, were the sweetest moments of your entire life. Those were the few moments of your life that you actually had nothing between you and Allah. And those might be the moments that save you in the Akhirah. That might have been the biggest gift Allah ever gave you, is those moments. But for some people who are on the edge, when times get tough, فَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ فِتْنَةٌ إِنْ قَلَبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ turns on his face, he turns his face away. What does that mean? It means I want nothing to do with Allah. How come He abandoned me? How come He gave me a hard time? Why would He do that to me? You see what happens to, and this is actually very easy to understand in our times, we live in a, in a hyper-consumer society. So everything comes quickly. You want to be entertained, just open up an app on your phone. You want to buy something, just order it on Amazon, it'll show up at your door. Everything's become effortless. And everything's become instantaneous. You want something, it'll come to you. You don't have to go to it, it'll come to you. Everything's quick, 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 quick. We're used to getting served now. We're used to constantly getting served. And if one order of yours is two days late, three days late, you're going to give it one star, thumbs down, bad rating. You're used to this now. And now you make dua to Allah. Or you, want, you expect Allah to take care of some of your problem, but you're so used to getting things done so quickly. And immediately. And when it doesn't happen, we're like, this is poor service. I need better customer service. You know, I'm not gonna go to Allah again and place an order. Because <laughs> you're, you're, you're a customer now. You're entitled now. But he turns his face from Allah. You know, he didn't even listen to me. He didn't even solve my problem. Understand that Allah Azza wa has a plan for everybody. And just to give you a comparison, in the case of Yaqub alayhi salam who lost his child. Allah returned his child to him after years. Many, many years. And in the case of Musa alayhi salam, his mother also lost her child. She put him in the water. And he returned that child after a few hours. Because by the time the child got hungry, the next feeding was from the same mother. 
because he wouldn't drink from anybody else. What am I trying to get at? Sometimes in this world, sometimes Allah will answer that, that, that pain of yours, Allah will relieve it immediately. Sometimes He will relieve it after many, many years. But in all of it, there's good. In all of it, there's good. I, I love the story of Musa alayhi particularly because the, the, the khair in it, think about the khair in it. All those years, this father cried, yes? This father almost lost his, his, his eyesight and eventually, وَبْيَضْبَطْ عَيْنَاهُ Quran says, some of the ulama like Alusi rahimahullah comment, you know, Amiya, and he became blind from crying. But all this time, where was Yusuf? Yusuf was in a prison. Yusuf is being held in, you know, he was a, ch a, a child servant. When he got older enough, he got thrown into prison. He spent many of his years in jail. So either he served as a, as, as a servant or he served as a prisoner inmate in jail. Not a good life. That's not a good life. And but at the end of it all, when he interprets a dream of the king, and that dream means that that entire economy is going to collapse in seven years, and people are going to die of starvation, the only one who knows how to handle that crisis was Yusuf. Had he not been in jail, he would have never helped the king. You understand this? If Yusuf was with his father the whole time, السلام, that never would have happened. But now that Yusuf is there to interpret the dream and says, Inni hafizun, I mean, I'm the one who can take care of this responsibility. Make me the treasury secretary. Give me this responsibility. When he does that, and he takes care of it, what happens next? What happens next is thousands if not hundreds of thousands of parents don't have to cry that their children died of starvation. One father cried for several years. But his tears, Allah made them a way of saving thousands of families from crying. Because if he didn't save that economy, and he didn't save that crop, the entire land would have been in drought and people would have died of starvation and war would have happened, all kinds of crises would have happened. Sometimes the difficulty you go through isn't just better for you, maybe through your difficulty, you will become a sadaqa jariya for so many others. You don't even know. You don't know. But if you're on the edge, you don't have that kind of trust in Allah. So you turn your back to Allah. In qalaba ala wajhihi. And then Allah says, khasira dunya wal akhira, this is what I want to leave you with. When people do that, they have lost this world and the next. What does that mean? This person lost this world and the next. If you can hold on, look, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Human beings were made in toil and, and labor and difficulty. Whether you believe in Allah or not, you will still have challenges in life, yes or no? Whether you believe in Allah or not, it's still going to be tough to make a living. It's still going to be tough to, to battle a, a sickness, you know? This life, it's not like for believers, they get luxury and disbelievers get difficulty. No, Allah made all human beings in, in struggle. That's what He said. If you could go through this struggle with Iman, then you will have the best of this life. And while you are making the best of this life, you'll be making the best of the next life too. You'll get a kind of peace nobody else enjoys. You're sick and the disbeliever is sick. But in your sickness, you still find peace and they find no peace. You're in financial trouble, they're in financial trouble. Exactly the same kind of trouble, exactly the same kind of hunger, but you are, you're still, your heart is still at ease. Allah is still giving you tranquility. Allah is still rewarding you. Allah is still protecting you. And they're miserable. You made this life worse for yourself too. And on top of that, you missed out on the next life. Qasira dunya wal akhirah. This is why we ask Allah, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. The qualification of hasana means when you ask Allah for good things in this life, it means good on the outside and good on the inside. Good as in beautiful, tasty, enjoyable from the outside and good for my next life. Actually good for me in the long run. Building my akhirah at the same time. This is Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. And therefore, wa fil akhirati hasana. And as a result, good in the next life. Something that's beautiful and good on the inside as well. So Allah Azza wa Jalla says, He lost this world and the next. ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ That is the ultimate loss. The, you know, the, the Quran uses three words for loss. Allah Azza wa Jalla uses khusr, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرٍ He uses khasaran and he uses khusran. And khusran is a maslar, sirat al-mubalagha, the worst kind of loss. The worst imaginable loss. Of all the kinds of loss Allah talks about, the worst of all losses is this one. Somebody who was actually a believer and lost their faith when times got tough. And as a result, they lost this life and the next life and they had it all. Allah had everything laid out for them. Everything was laid out for them. And so I leave you with the following. Allah Azza wa Jal will describe 
الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسِ About believers, he says they will inherit paradise. Strange word. Allah didn't say, in many places he says they will enter paradise. But in Surah Al-Mu'minun, he says they will inherit paradise. Now you know that inheritance is actually something that, you know, is handed down to you because you already, your family owned it already. And that's actually how the Prophet ﷺ described it. Allah Azza wa Jal literally, there's two explanations of it. Jannah was actually given to our father, Adam alayhi salam. And so already we're qualified for it. Already. So we're, we're gonna get it in mirath. We're gonna inherit it. But another beautiful hadith that I read when I was studying the, the meaning of, of miratha and actually studying firdaus, an incredible statement of the Prophet He says, Allah Azza wa Jal made a house in Jannah, in firdaus. Firdaus is the highest Jannah. Allah made a house in Firdaus for every human being. Not just every believer, every human being. But some people just didn't want to go. So when believers get there, there's going to be a lot of empty homes. And so they're going to inherit those homes. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us of those who inherit homes in Jannah, and not those whose homes remain empty. The, the, the house Allah has built for you, and the house Allah has built for me, is already there. The expectation from Allah for you to enter the highest place in Jannah is already there. Don't mess it up. Don't fall off the edge. Don't lose your faith in Allah. Just think of these tough times as just Allah wanting to see what price you're willing to pay for that house. May Allah Azza wa Jal help us through our difficulties and never allow us ever to lose our faith in Him.